Now with fish keeping, the health of your fish is 50% due to the water quality, which we are just testing now, and 50% due to the food that you feed. Now, most um, processed food, flakes, most pellets and processed food is just processed crap. Um, it, what pressure cooked, processed, what you really want is raw state, holistic, slow cooked. Um, so the food that I would like to feed these fish is Danichi, because in my opinion, it's the best quality food in the world. And I would feed them Spectrum's probiotics because the probiotic bacteria means that when the fish poo, the bacteria in the poo eats the poo. And that'll help to lower the nutrient level of this aquarium which is evidently high, judged by all the algae. Now these fish are also getting frozen food. I like frozen food as a treat. Um, its nutrient value is relatively low, but the quality of frozen food, is, it, it, it is okay. So I am happy they're getting frozen food. But the other thing to be aware of with discus is discus can be really fussy. So you can wanna feed them whatever you wanna feed them, but that doesn't mean they necessarily want to eat it. So if this was my tank, I would buy Spectrum's probiotics and I would buy Danichi discus and I would buy a small one of each. Now, if the discus don't actually eat it, all the other fish will. And looking at these fish, they will benefit from a higher quality food that will increase their immune system and help fight off disease like you can see. Now, as far as um, the discus are concerned, the other thing is that you can get them onto new foods, but you've sort of got to train them onto it. And the way that you do that is that you mix in a little bit of Danichi or probiotics in with your frozen food, and then you feed it to the fish so it all sort of smells the same. And then you slowly increase the amount of the um, probiotics or Danichi until eventually they learn to eat it. And that's a great theory and most of the time it works, but actually it's up to the fish. Now when trying to feed discus, the other thing just to be aware of is that in the wild, what discus are doing is feeding off little organisms that crawl around on the driftwood that they sort of swim in amongst in the attributes that head into the Amazon River. So most of those things that the discus eat tend to be nocturnal. So discus tend to eat more at night time. So just be aware of that. Like I have been involved in aquariums where the discus are very shy. And when you feed the discus in the daytime, all the other fish out compete the discus and the discus don't seem interested in the food and they just don't get the food. Sometimes if you feed the discus at nighttime, then the discus will feed and the other fish tend to be asleep. So they get more of a go. So there's something to try. Once again, it doesn't always work as it just depends on the actual fish itself. Now all over these plants is what's called blackbeard algae. Now blackbeard algae is just due to a imbalance of organic carbon or CO2. Now in this case, the CO2 is not working because there should be bubbles coming out of that. And probably the um, gas needs changing and this definitely needs a clean. So if the CO2 starts functioning in this aquarium, then we should be able to control the blackbeard. But while there's no CO2, we cannot control the blackbeard. But CO2 is not the only way of controlling blackbeard. There are products like No More Blackbeard, which is an organic carbon product, which is actually quite effective at getting rid of the blackbeard. And then if you do use organic carbon dosing, that's a good way of making sure that the blackbeard doesn't come back. So basically, the plants want about eight hours a day of light. The plants want a fertilizer. So you need to look at what fertilizer you're gonna feed and you need to make sure that the plants have got CO2 and try not to run air stones in the daytime. If you're gonna run an air stone because you want oxygen for your fish, you run the air stone at night, opposite to your lights. 
because the plants will produce CO2 at um, nighttime, nighttime and they'll produce oxygen during the day. So in a perfect world, if you're going to run an airstone, then um, run at night. So where we're at with the water quality is the ammonia, first degree fish waste is zero. There is a little bit of nitrite in the water. So therefore, to get rid of that nitrite, the first thing I'd want to do is I would want to give the filter a bit of a clean. And then I would want to um, either get rid of this stupid, ugly spray bar and just put the elbow on it so it agitates the surface a bit more or give the spray bar a clean and aim it up so it agitates the surface a bit more. I just want to see that surface get broken. Also, the, the water is very, very stagnant. If this was my tank, I'd put a power head and just, I'd want to see the water moving around a little bit more. I would not want to see it so stagnant. And I want to see a little bit more water agitation on the surface, not heaps, but just, just more. Um, then we've got basically no nitrate in the aquarium. Um, and we've got the pH is very acid, more acid than I'd like it. So I'd like to buff it up a little bit more. The other thing is that the KH is zero. Now the problem with the KH of zero is that your pH will keep plummeting. And the other thing is that um, the good bacteria need a bit of carbonate to help the nitrification. So I would add some um, KH buffer and I would want to make sure that my KH was not zero. Adding that will also bring the pH up a little bit. And then the water age, the um, GH is very high. That was sort of 13. Now that can be because you're putting in um, any salts like um, Amazon salts or anything like that. You might be getting a bit happy on that. Um, or you might just tip too much water ager in. If you, if you just go, oh yeah, chuck some water ager in and you're chucking in too much water ager, that can raise the GH up. And that's not ideal. The plants aren't really impressed with that. Doesn't worry, really worry the fish too much. But we've got phosphate level through the roof. Now, phosphate level through the roof is going to be due to low quality food. Well, it's not low quality, but not the best quality food. Um, but also you've got this big cucumber or zucchini or whatever the hell that is there. And that would be absolutely full of phosphate. So I actually don't mind a little bit of that in there just to flush the um, catfish out. But just be aware that it's completely full of phosphate because um, any terrestrial greens are going to be full of phosphate. So what you're doing there is just dumping heaps of phosphate in the water and that's going to cause more algae. The other thing to be aware of is that these terrestrial um, veggies and plants and so forth, they're actually, they're, the fish can't really break them down. So it's actually fairly good just to flush the fish out, but they actually don't really get nutrients from it. So they're attracted to eat it and they sort of enjoy eating it. But in general, it's just going to bomb up your phosphate level and that's going to bomb up your algae, which is obviously what's happening here. So I would cut that down to nearly nothing. And then I would just feed high quality foods like Danichi. And, um, and if you are worried about the catfish, uh, having a tiny bit of driftwood is usually enough for them to um, gnaw on and help their digestion. But then foods like Danichi is not completely digestible. It's got millennium clay and stuff in it, so therefore it keeps the digestive system going. Because if you're feeding, let's say, crap food like flakes or processed pellets, what happens is the nutrients get extracted out very quickly within the digestive system of the fish, particularly for fish like catfish that have got very long digestive systems, then the rest of the digestive system is working on itself, which causes all sorts of trouble. So you want to have something going through the digestive system of the fish. Now that's why Danichi is so good, because the Danichi is not completely digestible, so therefore the whole digestive system will be used. So if I was you, I would quit with this. If you do want to chuck a bit in every now and then, I'm totally fine with that, but I wouldn't be chucking a big slab in Otherwise, you're just raising your phosphate. Now, to lower your phosphate, there's many products on the market that can lower it, but the easiest way to lower it is just do a whole bunch of water changes and um, make sure you're using a gravel cleaner. Don't gravel clean around the base of your plants. Um, these, this tank doesn't have many 
um, rooted plants, but there are some in there. And just keep an eye on your phosphate and just get that down. And if you start getting your phosphate down and you stop putting things in that'll cause phosphate and you increase the quality of your food and you stop feeding processed crap, then you will um, quickly improve the quality of your water. And it will not happen overnight. And then as the plants start growing properly, instead of dying slowly, then actually what you'll be doing is pulling, you should be pulling plants out of this aquarium pretty much every week. And that's the best way of keeping your phosphate down. Because if you're pulling plants out of the water every week, the plants actually store massive amounts of phosphate. So they actually don't use massive amounts of phosphate. But they store massive amounts of phosphate. So if you're regularly clipping your plants and pulling them out, clipping your plants and pulling them out, clipping your plants and pull them out, pulling them out, that's how you control your phosphate. So basically a plant which is growing is good for your aquarium. A plant which is slowly dying is bad for your aquarium.